welcome to Small Spark Theory. This podcast is designed as a collection of thoughts, ideas, and practical tips on using marginal gains to help your agency new business endeavors. Small Spark Theory is hosted and created by Lucy Mann, founder of Gunpowder Consulting. Welcome back to Small Spark Theory. Today we're going to be talking about lead generation. For many agencies, this is the part that they really struggle with. So I'm delighted to have with me here today Alex Sibyl and Dan Sudron from the Future Factory. Now, if your idea of a new business lead generation agency is some slick salespeople and people who are just not culturally aligned to your agency business, then Future Factory are as far from that preconception as possible. Back in the day, I started my career working in a new business lead generation agency and have worked with many of them over the years. And I I know from experience that often the problem that those kind of businesses have is finding the right people. New business people can be a little bit maligned by the industry, but actually you've got to be pretty damn smart to be able to assimilate multiple agency propositions in a short space of time and command the attention of a senior busy marketing director very quickly and engage them in a way where they're prepared to give you some of their time. What the Future Factory have done really well is they've managed to hire really, really good people and keep a steady flow of good people coming into their business, which is why I enjoy working with them and why I've invited them here today. Last year, Future Factory's clients won new business in excess of £15 million through Future Factory introductions. Alex, Dan, welcome. That's a fantastic stat. Hello. Nice to be here. Hi. Hello. Thanks. 15 million is that was that a particularly good year or is that is that about average that is about average the previous year was about 10 million mm-hmm. um but we probably had a slightly smaller client base so okay. I'd say it's actually about on right. average. and actually that's all we find out about so i know there's plenty of business that our clients win that we don't always manage to keep track of yes fantastic the the area of new business that you get involved in which is kind of at the cold face is a bit of a dark art for a lot of agencies. So I know that we can get some real insights here today for our listeners. But before we go into that, it would be great if you could just give us a little bit of background on on how you came to be running the Future Factory. We both uh, actually ran our own businesses straight out of university. I ran a ski holiday business in France and Dan ran a record shop in Middlesbrough. It was was kind of in our nature that we would look to run our own businesses again once we'd moved to London. And we first met, um, we were both employed in another new business agency actually, in director level roles for about three years before we set up the Future Factory. And I suppose we'd seen the benefits of offering an agency new business service that offered both the benefits of outsourced service, so dedicated resource, able to invest in data and research, and then definitely the benefits of having someone in-house, which this was the softer side of things, really understanding the agency's ethos, their passions, their capabilities, and, and where they're looking to go. So the Future Act, I suppose, aims to bridge that gap. Great. One of the questions I've been asking all of our interviewees on this podcast series is what the most common challenges are that clients come to you with? Well, ours is, you know, pretty obvious. It's when people want or need new business, but ultimately it's normally when a pipeline has dried up and actually someone can't forecast or see where new business is going to come from. Mm -hmm. For me, actually, it's much more about taking control of the new business process, actually. So, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's seen as a dark art um, lead generation. That is, I think that's absolutely right. And it's not really, it's about process and just kind of engage in different parts of your brain and actually most agencies don't have those resources in-house all the time for me really our services allow clients to almost have basically a new business sniper look at what's really interesting about the business then try and work out the brands that they might want to work with or actually the brands that would suit their skills Mm -hmm. um it should be something that people think about really early on but actually it's mainly when they run out you know or actually, if they've got loads of experience in one sector or even a discipline and they want to move slightly away from that um, to aid growth. We've even had it in the past where there's been some big hires or actually there needs to be some engagement in the team and some fresh new business, sometimes creative new business 
can can help with that as well. Okay, so it's either more of the same or diversifying into a different area. Do you get involved where they've had somebody internally perhaps and that isn't particularly working out, so they're just trying to find another way? Yeah, absolutely. You know, 90% of the time, and we prefer it this way actually, we come into play when they when they've had a relatively bad experience when it comes to even new business or lead generation. Okay. Actually, the worst thing for us is if, you know, it's crisis point. So if someone already knows a big client's leaving. Yeah. Or actually they're, they're just, for whatever reason, have realised that a huge percentage of their business relies on one client. Yeah. I was at a talk last week um, and a guy from Emergence Ac- Acquisitions Company called Green Square was saying that if any client is worth more than 20%, of their business then actually he would see that as not a particularly good place yeah, to be which yeah. i think most people would be shocked about yeah that it's as low as 20 yeah. percent. yeah i agree i agree but it is precarious it's interesting you you say about that and i i know the way that you work you are relatively able to see results in a in a short space of time now the, the work that i do isn't about short-term results it's about longer-term process and planning but even for you, the foundations of what you do takes a while to get the process going and to get the introduction. So often agencies leave it too late before they come and talk to you. Yeah. What you've got to think is is we're approaching brands when they don't necessarily have a brief often. Yeah. So we're the ones that are kind of messing it up for, for incumbent agencies. Mm. But, you know, it's, it's vicious out there. So mm. you might as well try and carve out projects. So it takes a bit of time. It's human nature that they'll want uh, a brand would want to meet an agency, get to know them a little bit, probably try them out on a small brief before trying them with a larger brief. Yeah. And actually just purely around uh, an agency's new business process, it takes months to get a first meeting and diary, a second meeting and diary, work up some, some project ideas and actually get sign off. So normally you're looking at about nine months if you're lucky. Yeah from engagement with a brand to conversion. Great. So when you say, yeah, we get quick results, yeah, clients usually are attending meetings within the first month of starting working with us, yeah. which is great. Yeah. yeah, seeing the revenues from those yes. takes a lot longer. Yeah. And anything to do with new business, to, yeah. to come up with a new biz strategy when you're in trouble is not the right place to no. start. No. Be it's support. quite rare, but we do now and again have an agency who comes to us and says, we're in a great position. We've got this hero piece of work. Yeah. We're doing really well. We've got a great pipeline. And that's why I want to engage with you because we know yeah. going into meetings with brands, we come across so much better if we're on a winning streak. Yes. And that's quite rare, but you know you're dealing with an agency then who understand new business well yeah um when they are engaging you actually not because they're desperately in need yes but because they realize they're in a great position for picking up more work and impressing brands and it's a growth strategy rather than a survival yes yeah, um, yeah exactly so where have you seen the biggest transformation at the beginning of this year, we carried out an analysis of the last five years hmm. of new business for clients and looked at those agencies who'd had the greatest successes versus those who hadn't had the best results hmm. from our work. We analysed that to see what influenced success with our clients. So I'm not sure if that's quite what you meant by the question. Hmm. But what we found from that actually was overwhelmingly the agencies who are good at follow-ups essentially um, had the greatest success. So on average, about a third of the meetings we arrange for our clients result in immediate next steps. Mm -hmm. There's live actions off the back of it. And a lot of agencies, if they have a meeting and there's not a brief at the back of the table, they go, oh, well, that's a shame. Mark it down as a waste of time and look to the next meeting Mm -hmm. to hopefully get a brief out of. The agencies who look at those two thirds of meetings where there isn't a live opportunity, but they focus on how they can keep engaged with those brands over the long term, they saw far greater ROI from our work than those who just looked whether there was a brief in, uh, off the back of a meeting. Right. So in terms of what we do, we see it in three main parts. So there's the lead gen, getting people in front, front yeah. of people. There's an art in that and, yeah. and hopefully we've cracked it. Mm-hmm. The next is a brand's meeting process which normally needs a lot of work. Yeah. But then after that, there's a, a huge amount of process beyond that, which is where marketing fits in, which is where a proper follow-up and farming strategy kicks yeah. in. Yeah. And, and actually, most agencies are decent at one of those three areas, but rarely do they tick enough boxes across. So actually, there's a lot of opportunities that are missed just by being a little bit slack, normally yeah. around the, the process and organisation part on the back yeah. end. 
So we've been plugging into that quite heavily, but it's often quite difficult to get our hands on the leads once people have met brands. I've been trying to get to understand why follow-up can be so poor. What's your feeling on, on why that happens? So I generally think that ego has a lot to do with everything. Okay. And actually, uh, people just need to be a lot more honest, a lot more direct, and get out of their own backsides a little bit. Um, so actually, if they were to, in meetings and follow-ups, just speak the truth, tell them what they want to get out of things, ask yeah. what needs to be done, say that they'll jump through whatever hoops need to be jumped through at whatever mm. point mm. and try and get some sort of dialogue that can go beyond a phone call or a meeting. They'd go a lot further, but often actually people generally are afraid to get rejection, I suppose. Yes, I was wondering about that. I was wondering whether the lack of follow-up sometimes comes down to a fear. It's almost a, whew, I've got through the meeting, let's quit while I'm ahead. If I then try and follow up, then I might get a knockback. So until they've said no, then I'm still winning. <laughs> Is, is, do you think possibly, there's a bit of that? Yeah. I think often agencies don't ask enough questions in those new business meetings to actually have enough knowledge to follow up with. So they don't get a deep enough understanding of what the brand is working on, what their challenges might be. So that actually beyond the meeting and beyond having shared their creds, they leave the meeting and wouldn't know how to engage the brand again around something that interests them. Right. Right. The reason why new business is so interesting, particularly from for like us, from an outsourced point of view, is Creative businesses are hard to sell, full stop. They mm. don't make themselves easy. And from a sales point of view, this there just isn't the skills to be able to make the most of the opportunities they're given. Mm -hmm. We had a look on Companies House and there's about 40,000 companies that consider themselves to be a creative agency, mm -hmm. creative comms agency. So it's hyper competitive. With that, there's loads of opportunity because most people are bad at packaging themselves, bad at understanding brands and making sure that within meetings there's next steps talked about and actually they understand that a meeting is just part of probably a five-step process to winning business yes. not the be all and end all yeah. they can actually get ahead of the game just by tightening all those little cogs up yeah i also think that in terms of how things have changed and how they're going to change moving forward brands are buying differently and with the potential economic downturn loon or at least uncertainty the way that it's going to kind of reinforce it and brands are starting to really want results and also buy on a very tactical basis really bad for big agencies who require mm. retainers and mm. a lot scarier for everyone brilliant for new business because it means there's movement constant movement yeah. loads of opportunities for incumbent agencies to make mistakes yeah loads of opportunities for new agencies to carve out relatively small budgets and impress so actually it's kind of quite a vibrant time you can look at it in two ways yeah. one you can be scared and not sleep at night and the second you can be excited that you're in control of all that and there's loads of opportunity to be able to harness so it sounds like it's an ideal time for people to be making those marginal gains and looking at making those meetings more meaningful being that little bit better at following up our last podcast we were talking about how you can perform better in, a, in your kind of first meeting with a potential client and how you can do more listening, ask more questions and do more listening rather than effectively running through all of your holiday snaps yeah. uh, with, and then coming away and thinking, well, you know, I, I'm sure they loved us. <laughs> but then then how, how do you how do Which you follow sadly up is that? still the approach of so many yeah. agencies. Do you get involved in coaching agencies around that so that they can make the most of the opportunities that you generate? Yep, absolutely. So we have a process that we can support agencies to go through to make sure that they prepare effectively. But also when we arrange a face-to-face -face meeting, it's kind of up to us to make sure that the person who's going into those meetings is fully prepared. Yeah. We always say that it more than ever in our, in our sector, it really matters whether even the individual that we've been speaking to is abrupt, super lovely, stretched of time, you know, all these things matter as well as what the interesting angles that we spoke about the challenges within the business the focus for the meeting itself yeah. that the point is that each section there needs to be a bit of an agenda agreed so that is a seamless follow-on and that includes the meeting i think the meetings themselves if if someone was to invest in training of, of their team if you're making anyone within your team attend meetings that isn't a business owner then they need to be they need to be going through some pretty robust training in my mind we do run a session with most of our clients and all new clients which is helping them to understand what clients, what questions they could possibly be asking in meetings right. and where, how those can help progress 
a meeting forward Great. and what prep they should be doing ahead of a meeting. So what insights they can gather, where they could gather those from, what's useful and how to use them in a meeting. Yeah, fantastic. I've asked you to think about your top three tips for any agencies listening today. What would be the three things that you would advise? I'd suggest to any agency owner or even senior agency director to export their LinkedIn contacts once per year. It's quite quick and easy to do to get them to an Excel and you can scan down and you'd be surprised at how many contacts you've got that you didn't know where they've ended up, where they've moved to. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice, quick thing to do that can instantly give you people to reach out to. Yeah. And on that, connect with everyone you meet with yes. on LinkedIn. It's such a low pressure way of, of staying in touch with someone and you never know where they're going to end up. And it's expected now. People don't see it as stalking, do they? Yeah. It's accepted business practice. Absolutely. It's yeah. rude not to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what about you, Dan? I suppose one of mine is new business is always a topic on around the board table, but it's never actually given enough energy, time or investment to do anything with it. So on that really is to stop talking and start doing in, in whatever those conversations are, are mm. happening to stop the, the revolving door of frustrating discussion around the board. The next is obviously related, but is really to start being excited by new business and taking control of it and making sure that's fed within your company. So a new business ethos is really important. Yeah. And that's also really important that everyone understands the journey of a, a piece of new business. It isn't just a client someone works on. Yeah. And that can really have a, a massive effect to absolutely everything in a business. You've reminded me by talking about the new business discussion around the board table, of how important it is, particularly when an agency is outsourcing part mm -hmm. of this really important part of their new business process that they still continue to engage with it because I, I'm sure you've had experience in the past I know I've had experience where there's been senior agency founders or senior agency execs who felt like they've ticked a box by having a budget line for an outsourced new business lead generation and feel like they've passed on responsibility to you and that doesn't work does it? They... Absolutely. We met, uh, we worked with an agency last year and they won their biggest client ever through us. So they won a client that was worth over £2 million wow. through our work, which was great. We paused working with them and then I re-met with them recently and they wanted to engage us again. They're mm. like, great, we won this big piece of work. We just want another one of those. And through the course of our conversation, I could tell because they'd had this big win, I could tell that even more so their attitude was going to be just you go away, Future Factory, do your thing, just get us meetings and one of them will convert again into a big two million one. Excellent. And I just know that's not the way that we needed them to be engaged with us. We yeah. needed them to evolve their process. We definitely need to work together as partners. Yeah. And they didn't want that at all. They just wanted us to do our thing and they felt another two million pound client would land on their laps. And yeah. so we decided not to work with each other because yeah. I know that if there's not the partnership and not working together, not engaging in the process, it won't work. No. In some yeah. ways, it's why people outsource. You know, you, you don't get a dog, then bark yourself. Yeah. But with new businesses, it just won't work. You know, no. there's no silver bullet. There's no secret answer. No. If there was, we'd all be on a yacht. It has to be constantly. It has to be marginal gain. I was having a conversation only last week with an agency owner trying to understand, could they recruit somebody for the role? And we were talking about the different skills that they would need somebody to fulfill this new business and marketing whole in their current setup. And it was everything from being able to identify sectors, identify businesses, manage the CRM, make the introductions, go to the meetings, do the follow up, nurture the leads, convert the business, as well as all the marketing support around that. Now, trying to find all of those skills and strengths and attributes in one person is a really, really tough thing, right? Yeah, I mean, the, those people do exist, but but they're unicorns. Yeah, absolutely. And also the more senior you get, there's a huge leadership part of, of the role. If I were to set up an agency now and to look for a biz dev director, there's only really a choice of a handful of people. I'd, yeah. I'd look at and we meet 100 agencies a year. On that, slightly controversial, but in most cases, I don't think the business development director is the ideal person to attend a new business meeting or at least in most cases is best done with an agency founder. Agency yeah. founders 
for strategic leads or branding directors or creatives, I think do the best in meetings. Yes. Because I think you've got that one hour opportunity to show to not just talk through your website essentially, which the brand director will already have seen, but rather to showcase your thinking, your creativity and the the magic you can bring to that brand and the uniqueness you can bring to that brand. And that's often done by someone who's not the business development director. And absolutely there is a need for business development directors in agencies to lead, manage that strategy, that process. There's so much for them to for them to push forward for everything to work, but they're not always or often not the right person to really bring the magic to um, to the work they've done and to what the brand they're meeting with could be doing in the future. Yeah, and from a client's point of view, they don't really want to be sold to, do they? They want to hear from a practitioner. We did some research and you know, it, it actually kicked out everything we knew, which is good, I suppose. But, yeah. you know, brands want to discuss topics, whether they're right or wrong, but interesting and show the depth of knowledge and, mm. and also get a dialogue between two people mm. and a challenge essentially yeah. which is no it's not an easy thing to do no what other tips have you got a nice little simple one for me was don't send mass emails to cold prospects that pretend to be personal emails i think people can see through it really quickly and mm. it doesn't feel personal for an agency a smaller agency it might feel like a really low cost quick way of reaching out to a lot of different brands very quickly but it just doesn't make the best first impression of your agency. And actually for most agencies, there's actually a really finite number of brands they want to be impressing, they want to be working with, they could work with, who'd have the budgets, who don't conflict with existing clients. Yeah. So actually once you've identified who those are, you're much better off reaching out to them on a much more targeted personal basis. Yeah. So obviously for event invitations, of course those things can be yeah. mass emailed, but they're not purporting to be a personal one-on-one email. I think the difference is, is it, it's if you're selling a product or sp- just services and it's relatively low cost then a mass approach could work will work london agencies now particularly but agencies in the uk are selling consultative services you know it's just and it's going to get more so like that and also it's expensive so in which case the way that you engage with a brand has to has to be interesting and relevant to them a point of view about their business about their challenges doesn't matter whether it's wrong as long as it's not offensive okay (laughs) <laughs> good advice right there good advice right there any other tips i reckon leaders of a business and also new business process should have complementary skills not too creatives not true strategists mm. you know not too visionaries there needs to be that complement between the two to make sure that there's success I suppose that's a strategy that I think a, a new business director brings alongside the strategic and creative thinking that the practitioner can bring i'm wondering with all of the agencies that you've worked with and of your past experience before I'm wondering what the advice that is there a piece of advice that you've been given that's really stuck yeah from my mum oh brilliant (laughs) from Maureen um so she hello Maureen (laughs) yes she's out there she'll be listening um (laughs) her and my dad ran a business together for a long time and, and she always used to say that it's easy to be busy but it's not easy to be busy making money Oh, um, so we have that running through our business as well. You know, you, you can think about, you, you know, the times that actually you're just almost treading water. Mm. You just got to make sure that you're super pointed and super focused when it comes to new business. That's absolutely true. Too easy to be a busy fool. Good advice, Maureen. Yeah, Maureen <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Where do you see the opportunities for marginal gains? In cold new business meetings, trying to do things better. So there is an art to just simply thinking about the questions to ask and what you're presenting and I think if you get two people from an agency working together always attending new business meetings then they will learn to read each other they'll and then eventually or quite, hopefully quite quickly spend less time thinking about what they're saying but be able to read the room better and be thinking about I'm seeing the reaction of the person they're talking to yeah. and see when someone's zoning out and then switch up the content they're talking about so all of that really takes practice yes. um, and preparation you do definitely get match fit yes for- your business meetings and you've seen that with your clients they're pro- seen it in ourselves yeah you know we we obviously do new business as, uh, as well and mm. if alex and i haven't been to a meeting together for a long time you just kind of stumble a little bit you don't feel as strong mm. you, you know you don't know your roles within a meeting and that's important yeah um and, and as alex said it really is about reading people and responding to people and if you're too busy thinking about thinking about what you've got to say then you can't do that 
then your listening skills are off. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're yeah. just projecting. Yeah, so then you're you're not going to be able to respond as effectively. Absolutely. So therefore, yeah, practicing new business meetings in those real scenarios. Yeah. Um, yeah, is an area that agencies definitely can within themselves. Yeah, see improvements. So I, I believe that proposition needs to be focused from everyone to someone. The only way you can do that is not just by preparation prior to a meeting, but also making sure that whilst you're there, you're looking in the whites of their eye and you, you, you're tailoring everything to their need. Great advice. Have you got a favourite book for us or a TED Talk or a particularly inspiring figure? I do. Um, it's, I think it's not that well known, but it's called Win Without Pitching. It's a book by Blair Enns yep. and you can find it on Amazon. And the whole premise of the book is that agencies should specialise and it's easier to become a leader in your field if you're operating in a niche. You can command higher fees if you're a specialist and actually and people will be prepared to pay higher fees um, than if they're working with a specialist rather than a generalist. It's equally as easy to set your marketing plan, to think about what thought leadership you should be doing, to be thinking about which events you should be attending if you have a specialism. So it really can make everything more pointed um, if your agency is more of a specialist than a generalist. And we've definitely seen specialist agencies grow faster, get faster results from our work. And so when we work with agencies that are less specialist, we will look at ways of making them more specialist or positioning them in that way when we're talking to certain brands or people. And I really like listening to a BBC podcast called The Bottom Line, which is much broader. It's about business issues across different disciplines and sectors. So anything from the future of automotive to how trade agreements are made all the way through to the UK space industry. But actually throughout there, there's a lot of broad business issues and specialist industry advice that can be used for agencies. Yeah. If agencies are listening to that, that's going to give them loads of hooks, conversation starters. Absolutely. Alex, Dan, that has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your experience and wisdom with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Pleasure. Thank you. It's competition time again. We are going to be giving away a copy of the book recommended by Alex and Dan at Future Factory, which is Win Without Pitching by Blair Enns. Just join in the conversation on Twitter if you use the hashtag SmallSparkTheory. Tell us how you're getting on with your marginal gains, whether it's managing to reach out to new prospects or whether you're getting some particular traction on LinkedIn. Tell us how you're getting on and we'll pick a winner and send a copy of Blair's book to you. Join us again next month where we're going to be talking about agency websites. You have been listening to Small Spark Theory, a podcast by Gunpowder Consulting. Music is provided by Duke Deck, available via dukedeck.com. Small Spark Theory is hosted by Lucy Mann. The editor is Isabel Jarvis. And the podcast is produced by Rosanna Miles at makemypodcast.space. Visit gunpowderconsulting.com for more information and visit our blog there to download further podcasts. Join the conversation on Twitter at gunpowdertweets, hashtag smallsparktheory. And if you like what you hear, head to iTunes and give us a star or five. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.